Hi, I'm Miss Colucci, and I am a narcissistic abuse recovery coach with QueenBeing.com, where we help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. Today, let us talk about the cycles of abuse that you may have experienced from a narcissist. Someone pointed out, and they can name themselves if they want, <laughs> that people don't often, it's not like you, you know, you're going through life and you, you you discover the abuse as it's happening to you in the cycles, in the pattern that for which it happens. In other words, you don't think I'm being groomed right now. I'm being love bombed until unless you've had some understanding to begin with. So usually by the time you have discovered you're actually being abused and by the time you recognize something's going on, you're well into a relationship. You are either kind of toward the end or toward a discard phase or you've been discarded, or it's gotten so bad that you start questioning things and you Google things in the middle of the night, like, um, should I cry every day? Uh, am I always wrong in a relationship? You start Googling things that make no sense, right? <laughs> well, they make sense, but they shouldn't be Googled. <laughs> so shouldn't have to be. Anyway, that's when you discover it, right? So let's talk about the cycle. So narcissists, they tend to begin with grooming. So first, you know, they gain your trust. They will um, appear to be, sometimes they'll fake altruism, like appear to be a nice guy, talk about all the volunteering they do and the, you know, the ways in which they're out there helping the world. That fake altruism combined with other things, you start to see as red flags. Um, sometimes they play the victim. You know, my life's been hard. My my ex-girlfriend left me. My wife left me. You know, I, you know, we tried to work it out, but you know, or she's crazy. And I, I couldn't make it work because she's crazy, you know, whatever. They play the victim. They read your vulnerabilities and they play to them. So if you seem like someone who's sensitive to something, they may play to it and really act like they're sensitive about that thing or bring it up just enough to trigger the emotion so that then they can soothe your emotion. So in other words, they may bring up your pain and then soothe your pain. Because as you can see, that'll set up a love bomb devalue. Does that make sense? It sets up the push pull. It sets up the, the pain and relief cycle that happens with a narcissist or a toxic person of any kind. They make you feel special. They may make you feel, you know, and that's part of love bombing too, the seduction of love bombing that comes in done in a systematic way. It's kind of slowly seeing how much you trust them and then pushing boundaries just a little bit more and a little bit more. Uh, they appear, they may even appear to have empathy. Like I said, they may be, as they're reading your vulnerabilities, you may consider that, that they have empathy. So be careful with, with that. Um, the reason that it um, affects someone more than another person is if someone has a high level of trust, they're trusting people, plus a low self-esteem or a low self-worth, that's a combination for very soft boundaries. If you can understand, you know, like that combination of having, um, trusting in people and having a low self-worth. Having a low self-worth and low self-value is number one gonna pretty much attract <laughs> people that hurt you across the board. So, I mean, you may attract nice people, but people, it tends to attract not so great people. So it's really important, obviously, to get your self-worth up. Anyway, high empathy is another um, factor for why we fall for it. Empathy is not a bad thing. But not knowing how to place boundaries around and how to read your own self when you have when you're a highly empathic person and you have a lot of empathy, um, that's where you can get into trouble. So as you gain your self worth and your self value, you kind of get a little more discerning with who you trust. But yourself in situations so that you can learn to trust the right people. The self worth. Um, the reason often that we need that we fall into these grooming and love bombing um, scenarios and we believe them is because our self-worth is low. This builds your self-worth momentarily, externally through someone else. So you feel you feel filled up and you feel happy for a while. And you see, that's why that's why, that's why it's important to do that for yourself. Right. Grooming is kind of always happening until they get you hooked. So then comes the love bomb and the devalue cycle. Those two combined equal control. Once they have you hooked, the love bomb and the devalue cycle is a method of control. So they may buy you gifts. That's an obvious one. Take you places, take you on expensive dates. It doesn't even have to be expensive. They may just shower you with affection. 
um, lots of praise and adoration. You are the best kind of comments. This is the best. You are the most. We're soulmates. They put you up on a pedestal. They look at you with eyes that lure you in. Um, when you see it later, it's predatory. You see the predatory stare. It can be a seductive predatory stare. It can be a attractive predatory stare. It can be a charming predatory stare, but it's a predatory stare regardless of what emotion is behind it or what intention is behind it. They will push your boundaries in tempting ways. So maybe, you know, let's go do this then. And you say, no, I'm busy then. Oh, but it's going to be so great. So it's not like pushing your boundaries in a way that comes later with the devaluing. It's more like pushing your boundaries and seducing you into Basically, they're seducing you into crossing your own moral line that you have with yourself. They're breaking your own contract with yourself and giving over power to them. Does that make sense? They make promises to you. They talk about the future a lot. They basically um, moving really fast in a relationship can be it's not necessarily, you know, these are narcissists aren't the only people who love bomb. Let's put it that way. So and some amount of love bombing. I'm not trying to scare people away from like everything <laughs> because sometimes people do this and they're non-narcissistic. They're just a little bit excited, you know, but um, it's in combination with everything else. You got to look at the big picture when you're looking at, at um, narcissistic abuse. Narcissistic abuse is a big picture. It's not a small picture. It's a very big picture. It encompasses everything from every aspect of the relationship and it gets in every part of you. It gets into your emotions, your body, your head, your spirit, it takes you, it's all the way. And that stare in particular can feel very um, attractive because it's giving you an attention that you need. And often, like I said before, with the grooming, when they are reading your vulnerabilities, then they know which stare to give you. Or, or it could be that that's a particular attraction for them. And so, you know, if they know that you're going to feed off sexual energy, they'll give you the sexual predator stare that lures you into bed with them, right? Or if they know that you are a, a person that likes to get out and be around people and be really, you know, up, they may give you the charming stare, right? Come, come with me, you know, that kind of thing. So and anyway, some so those things that can happen with love bombing and that what that does was it do to you? It hooks you in. It, it, it gives you the feeling of intimacy and connection that in in reality should be built over time, but it happens in a short period of time. And when I say grooming is slow, what I mean is the grooming is still going on while the other things are going on. <laughs> so it's like the grooming kind of pushes the boundaries and tests the water. And then the love bombing kind of seals the deal and gets you completely hooked on them and believing in these promises and believing that there is um, relationship being created. Um, if you're a person of high empathy or a person that has a high need for um, love, acceptance, whatever in your life, then it can make you a little bit more vulnerable to this. After the love bombing comes the devalue, right? The devalue, it's not like, <laughs> you know, it can be like a light switch. It can be one minute you're in this love bombing phase and then the next minute you're in a devalue suddenly start doing things that are not the things they were doing when they were love bombing you. It's not like a normal healthy relationship that things fade and things change over time. It can be really abrupt. You don't know what happened. You don't know what hit you kind of thing. Often when there is an extreme positive, they'll throw the extreme negative at you. Uh, it's a push, pull, pull, push kind of situation where they pull you in. And then the second that you let your yourself fully embrace the emotions you're having for them. You know, you let yourself be in it. That's when oftentimes they will slam the door. They're highly avoidant people. And I think that when it gets real, it freaks them out and they push you away and the devaluing starts. Plus it's a different kind of supply to devalue because they need to have the constant discomfort and misery going on. I don't, I wish I, that's the part I always wish we could fix because this is the part where it just gets ugly, right? This devaluing is where it starts to hurt. Okay. So they will stop listening to you. They'll start judging you and criticizing you. They will withhold emotions, sex, whatever. The withholding starts, gaslighting, projection, all of those lovely things that we know 
um, will start happening. And then at the same time, they will start either breadcrumbing, you know, giving you little bits of goodness or completely love bombing you to pull you back in. And thus the cycle will continue and continue until the discard. So that is a brief sum up <laughs> of that cycle. The discard will happen. Either you leave or they will discard you eventually. Um, usually what happens is, well, sometimes what happens is the devaluing gets to the point where in between, instead of love bombing, you're barely getting a crumb, barely to keep you there. And by that time you're so trauma bonded, it really doesn't take much to keep you there. So there's, that's a, the sum up of the cycle. Oh yes, I forgot the Hoover. Hoover comes next, which is basically discard and Hoover, but it's the same cycle as love bomb devalue. You can kind of look at them side by side. It's the same, you know, circles going round and round. So thanks again for joining me as always. Um, I do wish you the best. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.